Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Speaking Thomas Rotten. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody, I hope you all enjoy it. Not really that cool of a holiday, but there was something that happened way back in the day that made it kind of cool. And not that I think murder is cool, but I think murder is cool. And you know what I'm talking about, it's the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, baby. Now let's just go over a quick recap of what happened during that massacre, because I do not remember learning about this in school, and it's pretty cool. So again, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, it took place in Chicago back in 1929. Actually happened in a parking garage garage, which is kind of kind of weird, but yeah, it happened in a parking garage, which was located at 2122 North Clark Street, which if you look it up now, it's just a house and like a neighborhood with a nice field and it looks very quaint. So basically this massacre was a gang fight between Al Capone's gang and Bugs Moran's gang. I mean, Al Capone is obviously pretty famous, Bugs Moran not as famous, but they were both prohibition gangsters. This massacre took place at 10.30 a.m. on the morning of February 14th, 1929. Four of Capone's men went into the garage at said 2122 North Clark Street. Two of Capone's men were actually dressed as police officers. So these men barged into the garage and screamed, Put your hands up, put your hands up, it's a raid, everybody get down on the fucking floor! So yeah, they naturally just fucking dropped their weapons and seized to the police. Capone's men were pretty successful in having them surrender because they pretty much did it right away and they got them all lined up against a wall. It was at this point that the two men that were dressed as police officers signaled two more of Capone's men to actually start firing at these guys who were all weaponless lined up against a wall. And when they started firing, they did not fucking stop. It was like a video game. All right, they filled them full of lead. And once they all dropped, they still kept shooting. They wanted to make sure that they were all really, really super, super dead. They even shot two people in the fucking face after they were already dead, so... Yeah, they just really wanted to ensure that hit. So Bugs Moran's gang got hit pretty hard by this massacre. Five total members of the gang died and two bystanders. They weren't really bystanders, they were kind of part of the gang, but not part of the gang, if you will. The victims included Frank and Peter Gusenberg, who were enforcers for Moran's gang, Moran's second-in-command, Albert Kachelik, Moran's bookkeeper, Adam Hayer, and another member of the crew, Albert Weinshank. Now, the two bystanders were John May, who was a mechanic of Moran's, and Reinhard Schwimmer, who was just an optician well, a retired optician who just wanted to hang out with the gang members because he thought it was cool, but it wasn't very cool because he got fucking shot dead. When I hear the word massacre, I think of a large, large killing, like hundreds of people, but still, seven people in one sitting and weaponless and all gunned down at the same time, that's pretty horrific. But of course, those men did not kill the person that they were even trying to kill. Bugs Moran was supposed to be at the garage that morning, but luckily, his ass slept in. So lesson learned, if you're a gangster, you should probably just sleep in because you're gonna miss your killing. Lucky day for him, I guess. But they really didn't need to kill Moran. After the massacre, his gang was all but diminished. His street cred was fucking gone completely. Everybody in Chicago thought he was a joke. He ended up going back to the streets, robbing stuff, doing petty crimes. He ended up serving time in prison, and that's where he died. So yeah, that massacre massacred a lot of people, massacred Bugs Moran's reputation. It just changed Chicago, basically, from that point forward. But the coolest thing was that Frank Gusenberg, one of the brothers, one of the enforcers, he did not die right away at the scene. He was actually able to survive a few hours, and he died at the hospital, but he was able to survive long enough for the cops to interrogate him and question him about the shooting. Those cops asked him who shot him, and his reply was, No one shot me. Hey, you know what? We take it to the grave, huh? We ain't no fucking rats here in Chicago. We take it to the goddamn grave. So yeah, Gusenberg was kind of a badass. Uh, he didn't even tell the cops because he was like, screw it, I'm about to die anyways. Northside Irish, you know what I'm talking about? Northside Irish. Uh, but yeah, he didn't give it up. Pretty cool. And this ended up kind of being the tipping point to end Prohibition because people were really fed up with all the violence and, and gang wars that were happening because of Prohibition. So people use this massacre as an example of what happens when Prohibition continues. So that's kind of cool. We got a huge massacre and alcohol became legal again. The more you know. So anyways, guys, that happened way back in 1929. I did not know that it was this much of a massacre. I thought only a couple people died. It was really something cool to learn about. So I hope it made your Valentine's Day more enjoyable. I hope you get to get cuddled up with your significant other and talk about murders later on tonight but of course i love each and every one of you that come by and watch these videos and listen to the podcast i appreciate your support again very happy valentine's day to you and we'll see you next time guys i love you very much bye